Hello and welcome to the AutoCAD uh, template tutorial. The purpose of this tutorial is to demonstrate how to use the um, created landscape architectural template for your own production um, methodology and workflow. And the reason why you and the reason we use templates is to make our workflows more efficient, so that we don't have to um, copy redundant information. So the first thing you're going to do is go to your course materials under the um, Blackboard 4171 and click on the AutoCAD Land Art Temp 1. That's going to download a, a temp, the Land Art Temp 1 DWT. The next thing you want to do is, and I'll close, actually close out of AutoCAD. But I'm going to go into AutoCAD now. And when prompted to select a template, and let's see if it loads for us, just give it a second. But we're prompted to load the template, then we will um, simply load the DWT that we just downloaded. All right, so this is kind of giving me a template to start from, but we're going to start a new folder. So I'm just going to go File, New Drawing. And when I do that, it's going to give me a dialog a box to allow me to select um, the, the DWT that I want to select. So I'm going to go to my Downloads and go back in the list actually and there's the Landark Temp 1 DWT that we just downloaded and I'm gonna say open okay when I do that you'll notice that some things happen um, in this instance you're brought back to the title block page and you'll see that in this title block page I already have a 24 by 36 um, inch uh, landscape set up for you the viewport is on layer zero, which is on a no plot layer, so that line won't plot. Um, and the title block, all the annotations are on their own um, and a, and a title block layer. Everything will be um, later sensitive, and we'll talk about that in a second. You have a graphic scale here that all you need to do is update the um, feet information. Um, you have a north arrow um, and the title, and all the other title block elements: the pro, um, project title, project address, um, LA and sheet number, so on and so forth. So for every time you start a project, you can just simply open this and uh, and begin. You just double click on the element that you want to change to update, and um, there you go. Now we'll transition over here into model space, and you'll notice in model space I have some things um, to help expedite the drawing workflow too. So I've just selected some hatches that I thought looked um, good, and you could always up to update these too. I would recommend that you stay on the same layer so you will keep the same line weight, but you can update these to suit you. But the idea is for every drawing now, you won't be searching for hatches. You'll just simply select the hatches that you have pre-established for every set of drawings that you do. If your grass will always be that grass, you always have that will always be concrete, so on and so forth. I've also set some um, line type scales for you already and you'll see under properties like this line type scale is 50 that I thought looked good in a 20 scale and 3 8 7 inch scale drawing again you can modify any of these elements um, again just try to stay consistent I would try to stay consistent with the um, nomenclature I have here uh, for um, the layers okay so you also that brings us to the layers now we're talking about layers um, all these things have been grouped in layers, right? So this has been this template has been created to of course correlate easily with a 3D modeling. So in a 3D model, you would have a context area, the area that you're not modeling, but that the your model sits within. So you have context. So uh, all those are grayed out, but they all they do come with subsets: context, edge, land, and within land you'll have ground um, cover, um, the perennial shrubs, trees, so on and so forth. And those layers are repeated again in existing um, land and also proposed land. Now existing land is going to be all the elements um, in your design extents area that are there before you started. So if you're coming into an area and it's completely blank, you wouldn't have any. But say you come into an area and you're going to actually develop it, and there's benches there, maybe there's a couple of trees, well, those elements will then be existing elements. Um, the PR stands for proposed elements, elements that we'll, we will be adding to the design. Um, and when we want to differentiate between those so that we can quantify them separately and, um, and accurately. 
Uh, another big thing about the line weights, or I'm sorry about the layers, are the line weights that are associated with them. I have set line weights ahead of time in um, each of these layers that I thought looked good in 3 8 scale and 20 scale in a drawing. So that means and you'll you'll select the correct layer to begin your drawing and that you don't have to worry about line weights. The line weights will already be set for you. Um, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit. I'll go back to the model space and you'll see it white. Now I'm going to double click in here into my viewport and do a zoom extents and bring that information up and you'll see it's showing up nicely. Now when I select my line weight tab down here you will see the line weights projected onto the drawing so that you actually see we're conveying line weight. So this particular setup having the white background too allows you to see the drawing effectively what it's going to look like before you plot it to PDF. And that's what you want, so it makes it more efficient. Okay. Double click in here. You can set the scale as you want, and then everything should work nicely. Okay. So for this particular um, project, all you're going to do is double click into these um, areas. And um, for project title, just call it AutoCAD Template. CAD Temp. Template. Get it so we can actually see it. There we go. Too fast again. And it's for the address, you'll just put um, this Greensboro, North Carolina. Oops. It's not cooperating. Okay, we'll put Greensboro. North Carolina. Okay. And then I might just put sheet one for this. And again, drawn by would be your name. Um, description. AutoCAD template would be fine again. Project manager, you could just put my name, the instructor. Um, you could just put Chris Harrison. Um, project number, create a project number, it's good to have. You should just create that for your own sake. Organize your work. So I'm going to call this 1001. And you would set the scale for whatever your drawing is, and then the date, of course. And then come up with a logo, something interesting for yourself to distinguish your title block from other people's. Okay, um, and that's it. Once you have that and you're ready to go, you need to worry about your plot styles. Now, the line weights have been set, however, I do have different colors um, so that we can uh, more easily see them in model space. So in model space, I have different colors. Let me turn it back off this line weight. So we have to tell the computer and then when it plots that, regardless of the color that you see, I want it to print black. So we do that through pen settings. So I want to go back to my, um, I have a pen setting already in place, but I'll show you how to do this. I'm going to go to control P. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Let me go to page setup back here. I'm going to right click and just um, edit page setup. And you'll see under plot style tables, and if you don't see that, you'll just hit this um, arrow key here to, um, so you can see the entire dialog box. I'm going to go into plot style tables, and you can go new. Now, I have one set everything to print black, but um, gray 253. And we'll just do a new one to demonstrate that. So this is all of my colors. Um, you'll navigate to this dialog box and I'm just going to scroll down and hold shift and I want to highlight all of them. So I'm going to highlight all of them and under my color dialog box I'm just going to say black. Now I like having at least one gray free to actually print gray and that's typically 253 and then I would just go back and say use object color. So everything else, all the other line colors will print black while color 253 will remain this gray color. I'm going to cancel that because I already have one, but that's how you create that plot style so that everything will print the way it's supposed to print, black and not in color. Okay. So I'm going to cancel that. So once you have that established, I'm just going to go to Control P. And for me, I can go um, save as PDF if you're on a Mac. If you're working on PC, you'll just change your printer to a DWG to PDF. I don't have that option here, but you should be able to select DWG to PDF and print it the same way. Um, I'm going to go save as a, or open as a PDF so we can actually see it in a preview. So 
so it'll print and we have a nice template created to actually show us what we what we created everything looks appropriately scaled everything looks good so I would just then say save as PDF and that would be your first sheet for the document and the remaining two sheets will be the or the remaining sheet rather will be the sheet from um, from layout additionally if you're on your layout here and it's black you want to go to your options type in options and you want to go to displays now it's a little bit different the interface I'm on a Mac but I'm going to my look and feel and there should be an area under displays that says colors you'll select colors and you'll have another dialog um, box and you should be able to select from that to select model space paper space so on and so forth but my paper space is set to default white and that's what allows it you can change it to really any color that you want default white's good because then we can allow us to see what it's actually going to print like and say okay